like to talk to you about the F tool. The F tool is used to straighten reed plates. It's fairly straightforward to flat sand the draw reed plate and that's going to be in contact with the comb. Uh, the comb can be made flat, the comb can be made airtight, uh, but the below reed plate, the surface that's in contact has the reeds in the way. So other than taking all the reeds off, flattening it and then putting them back on without warping it, how do you go about straightening the reed plate? Well, the F tool can do it. And the hard part about using the F tool isn't actually straightening the reed plate. It's taking the measurements. It's measuring. It's finding out where the air leak is happening. Uh, so the way we're going to do that is use the French tuner. Uh, so the French tuner is very good. The French tuner is a nice flat surface. Uh, what we're going to do is put the French tuner on in the usual fashion. What we're going to do is turn it around. We're going to hold it only from the back, up and down pressure. If I held it all along the, the, the length, I'd artificially flatten the curved reed plate. I want to leave it be. I want to see it at its worst. So I'm just holding it tight, but I'm hold only holding it tight at the back. I'm going to angle it away from me. I'm going to look at light reflecting off a page and let me point I want to look in this area to see if there's any light I'm looking at the front of the reed plate at this point whenever you position the French tuner just sort of jiggle it to get rid of any debris make sure you're well seated a new a brand new out of the box French tuner might not be uh, it still might be pretty new and sometimes, uh, especially on Suzuki reed plates where the rivet pads are a little wider, you really have to, you really have to click it in uh, to get it to, to, to sit. But once it breaks in, it, 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 uh, it sits nicely. Let me look with my own eyes just to make sure that I'm well positioned. And so we're looking in that area and you can see light shining through right at the tip. Uh, but if you're carefully looking for that but you had some ambient light reflecting you're not going to see anything so what you can do to, to cover it to get rid of the ambient light use your hand to shade don't don't block the, the light bouncing up here but use your left hand to sort of shade and uh, and cover and just so that you can see only the light that you want to see so there's quite the curve it's quite the bend up right at the tip I want to angle this and I want to look at light shining from the middle out through the front the front hole of the French tuner. So I'm looking here. Now, and the light doesn't seem to be right in the middle. The right the light seems to be coming from the front right up. I see light from here to here. So this is curved upwards. And if you look at a harmonica that's assembled, that has that kind of curve, you can see there's like a shadow right here. And even if I took this plate and I had good lighting, if you just look at the French tuner, uh, you can see a little shadow of light that goes away as you squeeze. Okay, But really by far, the most reproducible way, and by reproducible I mean I see it, take it off, put it back on, it's there and it's exactly the same leak. That's reproducible. That's something I'm going to know that I need to correct. If if I can't even go back and find it again, there's no point in trying to bend that reed plate to correct the curve. You're going to cause damage, right? So I would want to apply pressure to get rid of this leak. I want to apply pressure right here and maybe a little bit here and pressure here and here, counter pressure to, to squeeze. that down. So I'm going to position the French tuner right where I want it. Let me go further. It sits between the reeds, right? It's not it's not applying pressure on the reeds at all. One, two, three, four, five bounces. I want it to distribute that pressure so I'll go a little bit back. Make sure I'm not changing the shape of the other reed. You make sure you're well aligned. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go back and reassess. How did I do? 
Okay, I'm going to look with my own eyeballs first. Okay, what I see now is that leak is gone from the tip, but if I angle it a little bit, there's a little leak in the middle. So I've I've completely reversed that curve. So now there's an air leak right in the middle. Uh, so I've just worked against myself. So that's not to fear, we can fix this. So I applied pressure and I pushed this in too far. I'll just push it out, right? So I'll just position this. Again, I'll make sure that this is not harming any reeds. And as it is, it's not. And I'll just give it one little, okay, I gave it two little pops just so that I can have an idea. Again, reposition. And let's look. I'm taking a quick peek myself. So I don't see any air coming from the tip, coming from the middle. Now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the other end. So turn it around, apply the same pressure with your left hand on the front of the French tuner and now you're looking at this end, right? So I'm happy. There's there's it, there's a little bit of a curve at the end, but uh, I'm I'm happy with that. With the way the screws are are going to sit, uh, I'm not going to go after that. I'd be causing myself more grief. Um, so that's a real quick overview of how you use the F tool to take the, a front to back curve out of a of a blow replate. Now what you would do, you'd look at each and every single interspace one at a time. This is time consuming work but it's a lot faster than if you had to remove all these reeds. As you go further down, because the slots are longer, there's less m material, you have to apply less and less pressure as you correct down these uh, these uh, uh, reed plates um, but measure every one get a good idea of what you're doing measure a lot more than you actually correct that way you won't overshoot when you try when you get used to this you're going to sort of estimate and you're going to say well to, to take this curve out I'll need to apply you know six pops well just put apply three you know pulses and then reassess. Go halfway because you don't want to overshoot. Uh, you're going to end up working against yourself and that's going to cause cost you a lot more time. Play the read. Look for a leak. If there's a leak, find it, correct it, and then play it again. What I find is that even on reads that have quite uh, a big curve, you can get the read to play. Uh, and that's actually the problem. I mean, they play okay but the difference between playing okay and playing really well uh, is that air tightness and when they're airtight not only does the reed play but I can feel the note vibrate in my mouth uh, you know I feel it in my teeth it's my vocal tract that resonates this note again measure before you correct because if you correct something if you correct a leak that isn't there if, if you didn't measure properly you say well oh look uh, and that's something that can happen if you don't put the French tuner on properly and you're you're uh, leaned up against the rivet pad look how much light is shining through there see when it uh, make sure there's no debris make sure that you're you're well clicked in to get a good view right if you see a leak reposition and look for it again reposition your fingers and look for it again right look measure I can't stress that enough uh, because I uh, I want you to correct your reed plates I don't want you to damage them uh, it's best to do a little less right if you're coming close to perfect and you're having trouble just stop there good better is the enemy of good right if you if you've corrected it and you've gotten rid of you know 75 or 90 percent of uh, the leak you know and there's just this little glimmer of light that's shining just walk away right you know let's say you have a reed that's bowed this way and you apply your pressure and your counter pressure uh, 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 what you, you you know you can correct it till it's it's almost perfect what you want to avoid is uh, you know either 
applying too much pressure in one area, so you end up with an M or a W shape, you know. Or if you go at it and you keep at it all day, you'll end up with, you know, Charlie Brown's t-shirt, you know, he has this sort of pattern. Uh, you don't want that. Just, you know, if you have a deep curve, apply small amounts of pressure along the curve to gently take it out. And once you got it good, just stick with that. Don't overwork a read. It'll take you... Uh, there's a there's a fair learning curve there's a fair learning curve and I'm not gonna uh, it's not easy work it's meticulous work um, it, it'll take you a few weeks to get comfortable with this technique uh, email me uh, I offer support with my tools the goal here is for you to play a wonderful harmonica uh, a harmonica that you've upgraded using your own hands and I'm I'm here to support that I offer email support with the purchase of my tools